What are you struggling with as you come into this new year? I've heard of people losing their jobs, sickness, things coming against their families. You know the way that those circumstances are changed and transformed is when we just simply trust Jesus. And I was listening to that song and I, I was reminded that's a prayer. I want you to sing it one more time and I, I want you to think about the things that's been bearing down on you. And I want you just to release those as you sing about, pray about, trust in Jesus more. I want us to sing it one more time. Would you sing it one more time? Think about it. Just to take in His word. Just to know on His promise. Just to know the saith the Lord. Give it up. How I trust you, how I grew in more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you. Father, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to trust you. Not to doubt you, but to trust you. Father, you've been so faithful to us year after year after year. Father, we want to just think about glory and the victories that you've given us and realize God's given us abundant grace. And Lord, just receive more of that grace more of the unmerited favor of God. Father, I thank you, Lord, for 2016. It's a year of miracles. It's a year of transformation. Lord, I just release that to people. Lord, I thank you, Father, the downtrodden are not going to be downtrodden anymore. The sick are not going to be sick anymore. The poor are not going to be poor anymore. Father, I thank you, Lord, for changing lives as we do simply trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate the worship team. Thank you. I did a great job. Ray is, uh, Ray's got his family uh, here today, and uh, praise God for that. And, you know, this might be a thing for you. Uh, he tells them the only birthday present you want is for your family to be church on Sunday when it's when it's his birthday, and so I praise God for that. I thank you. Uh, I thank the Lord how He's working in there, and it's good to see some I hadn't seen in a while. And uh, let me go ahead and do this while it's while I got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm coming to you. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I heard the Lord when I was talking to you a while ago say He's going to give you a new way of learning that God's given it to you in your mind and in your heart. And he said, listen to me, because it's not only going to benefit you, but it's going to benefit people that are around you. And you're going to be able to teach what God gives you. He's given you a new thing, and he's put it inside you, and he's put it inside your head. Learning is not a hard thing. It's an easy thing. God says it's easy when I do it. So God's given it for you. So I got that a while ago in, in that whole deal. I want to tell you, God wants to, God's doing things in a new year, in a new way. So stop looking at the old package and say, well, this is the way it's always been. This is the way it's always going to be. No, it's not. This is a new year. And new year bring new things. I like that. I like that, Kurt. You did a good job with that. I like that with that. I want you to turn with me this morning. I'd, uh, I've, uh, 
been talking to you about the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, I want to see more manifestation of the gifts and spirit in my life and in the life of this church. But also, we don't want to leave out the fruit of the spirit, okay? And uh, so, I want to talk about that today. And, and uh, I, I wonder how many of you have uh, uh, you, you've made New Year's resolutions. Some of us have give up on revo- resolutions, okay? And that, that's not a bad thing. See, New Year's resolutions always depend on us. Well, I'm going to do better this year. It's not about you doing better. It's realizing how better God is in you. And God wants to do something this year. Won't you let him do it? You know, I hear people all the time, and they come, and they say, well, you know, they're giving a testimony for the Lord. You know, when I came to Jesus, I quit smoking, and I quit drinking, and I quit running around, and I quit this, and I quit that. And when they get through, I wonder, I said, well, what did he do? What did Jesus do? All that stuff you did, what did Jesus do? I want you to realize that God wants to work a work in us, and he has done that work, and that works through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. See, religion is trying to do better. The Spirit is receiving better. And that's what we do. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm going to, I'm going to do a little lengthy reading. I'm going to read from a different translation, so maybe different for you. I'd rather you read it off the board because you can help me read it. And it will make more sense to you with this way. And I think Peterson does a great job in translating this, okay? It, translations are very important. And you can get a hold of some translations sometimes that don't quite give you the meaning that you need to have. So I want you to listen this morning, and I want you to hear what the Apostle Paul says through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He's talking to churches that he holds very dear. They're in a province, or if you will, a state, like the state of Alabama. And all of these, uh, all, and all through the state, there are different churches in different locations within the state. And, 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 and the churches are the churches of, uh, of Galatia. And, and he speaks to them, and he speaks to them a message of freedom. If you'll read the, I, I love to read. I, I love, there's a couple of books that I just revel in. And I love the book of Galatians. Well, I, a lot of them, Galatians, Ephesians, and, and Hebrews. I love those books. I, I, I've been talking about starting a teaching on Wednesdays in the book of Hebrews because I love that book so very much. Michael told me that uh, he wanted to do a preaching series in Hebrews one time, and I'm hoping he's still coming up with that. But I want you to realize that the Apostle Paul was a man of religion who found out what it was to have relationship, and he never went back to religion. As a matter of fact, he hated it. And he writes this letter to a church a church that started out in the spirit, they got deliverance. It might have been from alcohol. It might have been from sickness. It might have been from family issues. But they got deliverance. They got saved. They got changed and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul goes off and does some ministry somewhere else. And in the meantime, the religious people come in. And instead of allowing them to grow in the spirit, they come in and bring the law back. And they teach them to perform again. Can I tell you something? I don't perform too good. I'm not a circus animal. Are you listening to me? I haven't been domesticated. I've been set free. And so have you. I've got to get into this. I can't keep going with this. Galatians chapter 5, Paul writes in verse 1. Christ has uh, has set us free to live a free life. I'm going to stop in there just a minute. I hope I don't preach all the way through this, but I'm going to try not to. Christ has set you free to live a free life. He didn't set you free to get a new set of rules. He set you free to be free. Okay? And and I want you to take your freedom. Stop getting back into bondage again. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. How do they do that? By putting you under the law again. I am emphatic about this. The moment any one of you submits to circumcision or any other rule-keeping system, at that same moment, Christ's hard-won gift of freedom is squandered. I repeat my warning. The person who accepts the ways of circumcision trades all the advantages of the free life in Christ for the obligations of the slave life of the law. 
I suspect you would never intend this, but this is what happens. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you're cut off from Christ. You fall out of grace. Meanwhile, we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the Spirit. God created you for relationship, to walk in the Spirit. For in Christ, neither our most conscientious religion nor our disregard of religion amounts to anything. What matters is something far more interior, faith expressed in love. You were running superbly. Who, ca- who cut in on you? deflecting you from the true course of obedience. This detour doesn't come from one who called you into the race in the first place. And please, don't toss this off as insignificant. It only takes a minute, a minute amount of yeast, you know, to permeate the entire loaf of bread. When he's talking about yeast, he is not talking about sin. He's talking about legalism. He's talking about working your way out of it. Deep down, the master has given you confidence that you will not defect. But the one who is upsetting you, whoever he is, will bear the divine judgment. As for the rumor that I continue to preach the ways of circumcision, as I did in those pre-Damascus road days, that's absurd. Why would I still be persecuted then? If I were preaching that old message, no one would be offended if I mentioned the cross now and then. It would be so watered down, uh, so watered down, so watered down in it, wouldn't matter one way or the other. Listen, we're not preaching the cross, grace, and we're not preaching law. If you preach law and grace, you negate both. Why don't these agitators, oppressive as they are about circumcision, go all the way and castrate themselves? Paul's really into this. Can you tell this? It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another. In love, that's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's the act of true freedom. If we bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you will be annihilating each other. And where will, and where will your precious freedom be then? My counsel is this. Live freely. I like this verse. I really like this verse. My counsel is this, live freely, animated, motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of the sinfulness, uh, 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 and of the sin, 